So guys, we're actually trying a brand new thing today, and that is we're gonna be doing a live video about truss rods and at the and simultaneously we're going to be recording um, a video for uh, uh, an edited video so it's gonna be the same same content but um, the edited version um, and that will be a cool thing because I don't think very many people uh, uh, watch all of the live stuff I can see when you have questions but I can't see what they are right now so um, I will have some question and answer at the end of the video um, if you guys want to just chat about how funny Brad is or, or the Coors Light chick that Devin sent me in the poster, knock yourself out, but I cannot see any questions. Um, the other thing is if you're watching the live version, um, this might be long enough to where YouTube inserts those, um, those ads in the, uh, uh, in the, the mid roll. And I know it's a pain in the ass and I know, but I, I always take. If, if that's something that you really don't want to see and you're watching the live version and it's right after I did it and I haven't had time to take them out, just wait a while and I'll take them out. Okay, all right, but you guys already know that shit. So, um, so we ready, Chris? Yep. All right, so we're gonna do the we're gonna do the thing where I do the edited thing and we're just gonna jump right into trust rods. So, hey everybody, this is Matt and we're at Texas Toast Guitars. Thanks for watching. Did you see how I, this was a fun? Fun thing that I did there. I feel like a used car salesman. I feel like Deal and Doug. Where I start over again. You guys get to see all of this good stuff. We haven't quite figured out how this is going to work yet. Hey everybody, this is Matt and we're at Texas Toast Guitars. Thanks for watching. Um, I wanted to do a quick video today about truss rods on the... Uh, however, it's not going to be quick. There's a lot of material that uh, I want to talk about with truss rods because I am the biggest truss rod nerd in the world and I want to bring my life as a truss rod nerd to you guys out there uh, who are watching. Um, so um, we're going to deep dive into all sorts of different truss rods. We're going to talk a little bit about the history of truss rods. We're going to talk about truss rods that I do use, truss rods that I don't use, and everything in between. Um, what I want you to know is um, many, many years ago, I was watching a Paul Reed Smith video and he was talking about how he um, uh, was wanted to know everything that he could know about every aspect of the guitar. And one of the things that he talked a lot about was the truss rod. And I'm like, you know what? I want to be a guitar maker and I want to be cool like Paul Reed Smith. I better know everything there is to know about truss rods. Um, more than anything, that just sort of confused me. And so I really had to... Uh, uh, come up with what I wanted to do as uh, used for the truss rods that uh, that we put in every Texas Toast guitar. Um, I've tried just about every single kind of truss rod I could find. I've made a bunch of truss rods. Um, I've tried active truss rods and passive. I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's go ahead and start with what a truss rod is, and then we're going to cover all of that stuff. But um, like I said, the, the, the most important thing is I'm a total truss rod nerd, and uh, if you're watching this, maybe you're a truss rod nerd too. So, um, so the first question is, uh, or the first thing that people often ask me is, well, is it safe to adjust my truss rod? Yes, it is safe for you to adjust your truss rod. As a matter of fact, for the most part, if you have an adjustable truss rod, it was designed for you to make some, some adjustments to it. Now, um, what people don't, often get is that the truss rod isn't a magical device. It's not intended to move your neck. It is intended to hold your neck. So um, the notion of, oh shit, I don't even have a neck here that I can use. Yeah, I do. So the notion of, um, uh, of a truss rod that you crank on and it suddenly bends or manipulates or forces the neck to do something is not is beyond the scope of its job. Um, I'm not saying that that if you have a truss rod and you go cranking on it, it won't do something, but that's not really what the truss rod is intended to do. What the truss rod is intended to do, whether it be an active or passive rod, and we're gonna get to that here in a second, is counter the force of the strings pulling up and towards the body. So you guys know what it's like if you have a truss rod that's completely neutral, it's not really doing anything, and you string up the guitar, after a while, you'll get kind of this, this kind of action. 
you'll get a little bit of a of a bow in your neck. And the truck. This is still a working shop. So a lot of you guys want to know uh, uh, if you. Uh, so if you guys have a uh, if you guys have a truss rod that has absolutely no tension on it, completely neutral, and you put strings on the guitar, it wants to kind of make the neck go up like this. And so if you do that, if you have a neck that's got strings on it, no tension on the rod, you'll start to get this kind of a bow here. And if you press down on the neck, you'll see that bow go away. Well, what the truss rod is 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 essentially doing is. You've got a neck that's that's kind of it's more or less doing this, and you push on this end of this. Remember, uh, if you have a, a big enough lever, you can move the world. If you press on this end, it straightens it out. What the truss rod does is it holds it here, so it holds it against the string tension. I see someone has uh, uh, given me a super chat. I can't see what it is, but thank you, thank you very much, sir. Um, so, uh, so. As you guys can imagine, a truss rod that is um, uh, that doesn't have any adjustments at all, like a stiffening rod like this steel bar here or carbon fiber, will do a lot to hold the neck in position against um, the string tension. The grain orientation of the neck can do a lot to hold hold the neck flat. Um, uh, that's a, a lot of people think that you want to have some relief in the neck and they're wrong. <laughs> Actually, it's, some people get used to a little bit of relief. I like to have the neck be dead flat. Um, that's, um, that's kind of just, that's what I like. And if you like something different, then, then you can, you can do that. You can adjust or, or you can tweak your, your truss rod to work in that, in that, uh, uh facilitate that relief. But most of the time necks should be dead flat. Um, and a stiffening rod can, can help, can certainly help with that. Um, you can, um, uh, if you can use steel, you can use carbon fiber, uh, you can use aluminum, you can use, uh, uh, graphite. So like the Paul Reed Smith acoustic guitars for a while just had a great big graphite bar. And I don't know if they still do, but it was non-adjustable, but it was a truss rod. The early Martin, um, necks had a T slot and a, a piece of, a piece of T stock that went in the T slot and then the fretboard got got put over it and uh, that that's a truss rod too. They're just not adjustable truss rods. Um, if you have a neck made by Kramer that's aluminum or Travis Bean that's aluminum, uh, no need for a truss rod in that because it's not going anywhere and in fact they do not have truss rods. Um, I don't think that the uh, graphite necks, the, the um, Moses Graphite necks. I don't think that. Do you know, Chris, if those have truss rods? You don't know, or you don't think they do? Huh? No. I don't. I don't know either. I don't. I don't think they do. Uh, send me a note in the comment section if you know if the graphite modulus graphite have uh, have a truss rod or not. They probably don't need it. Um, necks made out of wood that have you know regular necks, generally speaking, need a truss rod. This is the part of the video where someone goes, "Well, that Bill Kirchin guy has a neck that's made out of pine. It doesn't have a truss rod at all." Yeah, and that neck is an inch and an eighth at the at its thinnest, and the neck's going like this. Um, we can actually send you pictures of that. So anyway, um, let's talk about some of the them of the early truss rods that um, that were used. Um, this this example here is one that uh, I made. This is just a piece of three sixteenths rod. And it's got a bend over on uh, on one end, and it's it's got 1032 threads on this end. And you can this would be something that you would find on like say a Gibson uh, or a Fender back in the day. Um, I've got I've got a, a I've got a visual aid here for for the Gibson. Here is a a neck that I have made with um, it's got a Gibson truss rod, and um, you can actually see the adjustment nut there. And you can see the, the truss rod itself. It is just a, it's just a one piece three sixteenths rod. Um, this one has a um, uh, a three eighths piece of round stock that it's actually threaded into and then peened over so that it can only go um, you know one way. But you can you can pull off the same the same thing with uh, with a rod with just a little bend in it. Here you could you could put that in and and be be good to go. In fact, you can even do it in this. 
in this neck here, I bet you, eh, maybe we can't. It's not, it's not cut for it. But you, you get the idea. Uh, the fender necks with a single, single rod, truss rod have that same thing. They're fixed on one end and then have an adjustment nut on the other end. So the fender neck would be adjusted from the heel in the classic uh, truss rod. And then it, they don't have a bend over thing here. They have a, like a little toothed um, uh, piece. But, but I digress. So let's, let's talk about the, um, the, the Gibson rod first. So as you can see, in order for the Gibson rod to work, it has to be fixed on one end. Uh, actually, it has to be fixed on two ends. It has to be fixed on this end. And as you can see here, it's done with this 3 8 piece of uh, steel that we already talked about. And then you've got this 3 16 rod running down through to your headstock area. And um, I'm going to get this. Can you see that in the camera there, Chris? You guys watching live, I'm going to show you. Um, that is what it needs to look like. Um, and you do that with a spot facing tool. And the reason that it needs to look like that is because the, the Gibson rod has a toothed washer. And you can even see it's got little teeth that, that stick into the material. Let's, let's just take it off here. Oh, live video. Son of a bitch. I'm just going to leave that in. So we've got, we've got a, an acorn nut and we've got this toothed washer and it needs to kind of bite on this, this flat surface right there. Can you see that in the camera? So you might even be able to see the little tooth marks in the, uh, the flat face. You guys see what I'm talking about? So the reason it needs to be toothed is because it fits into the, <clears throat> fits into the slot. You probably need to adjust every camera angle here. It fits into the slot and then gets tightened against that, that flat space right there. If you don't have the flat space, this will not work. If you don't have, um, if you don't have the rod bottomed out on the, uh, on the headstock, this rod will not work. The other thing about this rod is it has to be, has to be, has to be in a curved channel. So the, the way that this rod works is it only works one way. It only pushes up, only pushes up. Um, it has to be in a curved slot. And what happens is you put it in a curved slot. You can imagine, I, this is only for visual aid here, so you can see it's in a curved slot and then it's backfilled with a piece of, of usually maple that's also curved and holds it in, a, in, a, in its curve or in its arch, opposite of the arch, in its smiley face, okay? So if you do that and you come over here and tighten this, you will see it wants to straighten the rod, okay? So I'm just, I'm just pulling on the neck and as I tighten it, as I tighten this, it straightens the rod. If this is just straight, then all it does is compress these two pieces together. Um, so if you, if it does, if it's just, if it's just straight and you just go tightening it, all it's going to do is just compress your wood. It's not going to actually um, adjust the truss rod in a way that holds it opposite the tension of the strings. Insert compress your wood joke here. Um, so I hope that that makes sense. The, um, the Gibson style rod that's used on the Les Paul. By the way, this even has a, um, a 14 degree headstock on it, even though the headstock isn't all the way headstocky. And people freak out. They're like, oh, Gibson's break because there's so much material removed here. No, they break because that's way too steep of a headstock angle. Uh, anyway, so whether you're using... Um, Anytime you're using a one-piece rod, whether you're using the fender uh, kind of heel adjust thing here or a bullet or an acorn or um, on like a Gibson 
Or if you say, for example, unscrew that and put this wheel adjust onto your 1032 uh, truss rod, it needs to be mounted into the channel in a curve. It has to be arched, okay? If it's not arched, it's not going to do anything. Um, some people will say, this is the part where all the guys on the, the Les Paul forum go, well, the original Les Pauls weren't at an arch. They were at an angle. They didn't work, okay? Um, all right. So that is the very, very first style of truss rod that was adjustable, and it wasn't developed by Fender or Gibson, but it was made, um, they made very good use of, of that truss rod. So um, if you ever come to my uh, Build Your Own Guitar class, I'll show you all this stuff, and you can you can tweak it and, and work it, etc. cetera. Um, I, I made this, uh, let's see, we're going to jump ahead historically to the Paul Reed Smith truss rod because I made this um, jig to work with both the, uh, the Gibson rod and the Paul Reed Smith rod. So the Paul Reed Smith rod is a little bit of, of um, a little bit different. It has a 3 16th rod, one piece. Um, it's got uh, some, uh, it's got a, a, a three, a 1032 right hand thread uh, piece on the front and a 1032 left hand thread on the back. And it also has an acorn nut, just like the Gibson um, just like the Gibson truss rod. However, it has been silver soldered to the, um, to the, to the three sixteenths rod. So when I put my wrench on there, it doesn't come off. In fact, it just stays there and turns the whole thing. It does not turn the, it does not turn the, um, see here if we can get this guy to thread on here um if i were to turn this on the um the 3 16th rod let's just thread it it'll just thread on if i if i unscrew it it'll just thread off the paul reed smith one will not and what it does again i think we've got lousy camera angles for the for those of you not watching or for those of you watching the live version Can we move the camera so that the, the live thing is kind of more aimed here, Chris? Even if it doesn't, I don't need to have my ugly face be in everything, so. Okay, that, that's, that's good right there. So you guys can see now, so remember we're, remember we're, we're tweaking, the, tweaking the, the Gibson rod and it's, it's coming up and we're loosening it and it's loosening it. Um, you can actually see it work. You can really feel it work too. Um, the Paul Reed Smith rod does something a little different. Um, you can actually watch the Paul Reed Smith rod. What's going to happen is because this thread here is right hand and this is left hand, as I start to adjust the rod, you can, you can actually see, oh, you can see the wood break. Um, you can actually see the rod move. Hold on. Can you see the rod actually moving? It's not going to do very much. It really helps if it's if it's in a curved or angled slot too. So it's boy, it just it just busted my thing. Um, so that's the Paul Reed Smith rod. Um, it's it's a pretty decent truss rod. Uh, works great for Paul Reed Smith. It's it, boy, it's a lot of extra effort to have you know very little mass. It rattles because it's a double acting rod. It um, it's hard to put in. It's hard to make. Uh, they're expensive, but nobody else uses them, so that's a cool, cool deal for Paul Reed Smith, I guess. So anyway, um, if you like Paul Reed Smiths, you're in good company. Uh, okay, let's move on to my other um, uh, block here, and we're going to talk about some of the other truss rods throughout history. Um, the next one that we're going to talk about is this double mm, dual acting rod. We're going to talk about what the difference between dual acting and double acting. Uh, action rods are or two-way rods because they're not the same thing this is a double acting truss rod in that it acts in two places the top and the bottom and all this is is it's a flat piece of quarter inch uh bar stock with a piece of three sixteenths round stock welded on one end and then it's got this loop 
it's got a loop there with um, some threads protruding. And what that does is it allows the, um, it allows the rod to actually do something without having to be in an arched, um, it doesn't have to be indexed in an arch, okay? So I've got this in my, my surrogate neck here. I'm just putting a regular old acorn nut on the end here. And uh, there's nothing holding it. As you can see, it, it's free to move in the, uh, in the slot. So it doesn't have to be spot faced like a Gibson. And as I adjust this nut, you can see the rod is moving, okay? It's acting on the top and it's acting on the bottom. It's acting on the top in the center and it's acting on the bottom on the ends, okay? So that's kind of, that's, that's holding my neck in a position there. Now, some people go, <laughs> people are like, well, what happened? When I loosen it, nothing happens. That's because it only acts in that one direction. If you want it to act in another direction on this rod, what you could do is you could turn it upside down. In fact, that's what this rod was intended to do. Um, if you have, if you have the opposite problem of most, most guitars and you need more, more relief the other way, you could, you could mount this in the, in the guitar oriented upside down. And that would be, you, you could, you could get that that way. This rod was used by Rickenbacker, Mose Wright, and just about everybody in, uh, that wasn't Gibson or Fender for a while. Um, oh, one thing I wanted to show you guys is you can put lots of different, um, you could use this Fender style, um, nut here and adjust the rod. Come on now. Just have to know where the... <laughs> so as you can see, that works just as well as the acorn nut does. Um, if you have a... Um, if you are into wheel adjust truss rods or if you watch my video, What Leo Fender Got Wrong, Heel Adjust Truss Rods, you could put one of these Stumac... Um, one of these Stumac wheel adjust, boy, this is really rough. I don't think I want to use this one. I want to use a different one. I think these threads are boogered up. But you could use this wheel adjust unit. Let's, let's try a different rod. The threads on this one are really dicked up. Here's a rod that, um, is, I think this one came from Warmoth, I think. Um, but it's the same thing, quarter inch rod with a, um, uh, with a, um, with a 3 16th threaded end, you can unscrew the, um, the adjustment and you can put on pretty much whatever you want. In this case, let's see. Well, that Stu Mac one does not want to thread on. I don't want to, I don't want to force that. I think I need to chase this 1032 thread, but you can see we'll put this, um, we'll put this fender style heel adjust thing on here and we'll go ahead and it's exactly the same thing. See what I'm saying, guys? Um, and you could probably put it in upside down. You probably can't do this if you have a warm off neck with this. I think they're they're fixed in place. But you can see, it works in it works in two ways. You just have to orient the rod differently. Okay. All right. So that is the two way truss rod. Um, and of course, you can combine that with, you know, the um, the stiffening bars on either side, and you could do uh, like Rickenbacker used to usually uses two of these uh, truss rods. Uh, you could do that, or you could do one with a couple of these stiffening bars on either side. That that works great. Uh, it could be steel or carbon fiber or whatever turns you on. Um, let's jump ahead to the uh, the next thing that we all tried was the Stumac hot rod truss rod. And this is not unlike the Paul Reed Smith rod, only it's got two pieces. So it doesn't have to be installed in an arch. It is installed flat and it's got right hand threads here and left hand threads here. And the adjustment knob uh, nut is silver soldered on. And it's the same kind of deal. You can put the, um, you put the rod in there my little jig here, let's see, and I'm gonna turn it, let's see, now, okay, so we, we are now, 
more or less, uh, there's, there's, there's just a little tension. Let's turn it. This is half a turn counterclockwise. Boy, and it's, it's, it, it, wants, it wants to stay. Let's just turn it a quarter turn, quarter turn clockwise. And you can see the arch that's formed here. Now let's turn it a half inch or a half turn, half turn counterclockwise. And it's going to be the same thing in the other direction. See what I mean? So the nice thing about the, the hot rod truss rod is it, it's a rod acting on itself, whereas the Paul Reed Smith rod is the same, same basic idea, but it's acting on the neck rather than on the rod itself. So you can get some compression issues with a rod like this, just like you can with a rod like this Gibson style or the Fender style. Boy, there's, there goes the, there goes my chunk of neck thing. I worked real hard on this. Dang it. Okay. All right. So that's the that's the Stumac hot rod truss rod, and there's a couple different, couple of different things that are like this. Um, the, the downside to this is you have to have, um, a little more than three eighths, uh, of truss rod gap in your, in your neck. Uh, you can see the difference between, between these two here. Let's just lay them down. You can see the difference in height on these two. The Stumac one is a little taller than the, um, than this, this older Moserite style truss rod. Um, so if you want to have a slim neck, you need to uh, take that into consideration when you're using the, the hot rod. The reason it's so much thicker is because you got two 3 16 rods instead of a piece of 3 16 rod welded to a quarter by eighth, basically welded to a piece of this stuff. Okay. Now let's talk about the truss rod that we've been using for a long, long time. It's essentially the same thing as, um, as the hot rod truss rod. It is a two-way truss rod um, in that it, it well, it's actually a two-way dual acting rod. So right now, if I turn it, um, let's turn it to the um, clockwise, you'll see that the rod actually is going up. And so it's going to work on the neck one spot, two spots. So two-way rod, but it also works in the opposite way if you turn the turn the the truss rod to counterclockwise you can see that whoa it's coming out of my jig here you can see that now you have a smiley face okay um and that's because the 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 nut is captive it's welded inside the thing here and um yeah so you get the truss rod works in two spots and it works in two directions unlike the Moserite knob where, or the Moserite <laughs> truss rod where you screw this guy in. Um, as you go clockwise, the rod moves. And as you go counterclockwise, you thread the adjustment nut off. Okay. So, yeah. And again, um, the nice thing about this is you can use any of these other adjustment knobs you want and you can mix and match you can collect them race them trade them so you could have an acorn nut or you could have this heel adjust thing or you could have uh, a wheel adjust or you could have a really long heel adjust the reason that they do this is because on a bolt-on neck there's really no reason to um there's no reason to adjust here you really need to start adjusting here. This is where the heel is. So they made this uh, adjustment nut extra long to, to work in the heel of a, of a fender neck. Okay, okay. Uh, here is a neck that we actually pulled the truss rod out of the other day. That was a fun video. Let's see if we can get it. <laughs> Doesn't want to come out, Chris. So this is a, a, one of a, a standard, or not unlike, not dissimilar to our rod. It's a piece of 3 16 round stock on a piece of quarter inch by eighth inch um, 
bar welded on on the uh, on the, the the opposite end of the adjustment unit. There's a there's a, a sleeve around the um, uh, the three sixteenths end here that's welded to the to the um, the flat stock, and the, the rod just sort of crushes it. And it's it's this this nut is captive. Um, the cool thing about this setup is the the truss rod slot can be can be flat and it can be reasonably shallow. So this is a pretty slim neck. Um, and you don't have to worry too much about you know poking through when you're when you're shaping your neck. You can make the neck um, nice nice and slim if you are into nice and slim necks. Um, one of the downsides to one of the one of the reasons that the old Gibson necks were so chunky was because it has to be mounted. Remember, it has to, has to, has to be pressed down. It has to be in an arch. So in order for that to happen, what was going on is you'd be you'd be fine here and here, but you'd have like very, very little um, neck meat <laughs> directly under. It's not a big deal because you're not pushing down on that part. You're actually pushing up on the thick part. But in order for the truss rod to work, it works better if the, the more curved it is. So if it's really curved, you have to have a thicker neck. So anyway, um, I hope that this helps you guys out with uh, some of the questions that you've been having about truss rods. And, um, you know, uh, it's a wildly boring topic unless you're me. And uh, Chris hates it when I do truss rod lecture video stuff um, during the classes. But... Um, I still like it, so we still do it. Um, I wonder if we can get this guy to go. The part of my part of my uh, my visual aid kind of busted here. Is this one even moving in the? There we go. There's so much of this. Remember, guys, that like. There you go. You can actually see it. See it move. Okay, so that's just tightening it one way, and then you turn it the other way, and it will. It'll go until the, the little the little pieces move and then and then it'll start to push up that way. You can probably see it, right? Maybe a little bit. It's very subtle, okay? Um, so anyway, guys, if you have any more questions about truss rods, um, you know what to do. Leave them in the comment section below and um, I'll try to answer those as best as I possibly can. Um, I don't know if this was a good video or not. I hope that it was at least informative. We'll find out after when everyone leaves questions in the comment section below. I'm also going to leave um, uh, a link to where you can buy these truss rods and a discount code. If you want to get a little bit of money off of those, you absolutely can. Um, from our good friends at Bitterroot Guitars, John and Cheryl have hooked us up and uh, we try to do that for them too. Um, if you appreciate content like this, you might want to go to our Patreon page and um, become a member. Even a buck a month goes a long way to helping us bring you guys neat stuff like this and helps me make goofy jigs like this one. Uh, but if you, if you can't do Patreon, we totally get it. Just share the video and like the video and um, you know, let all of your friends know how wacky it was to watch me talk about trust such for how long? Uh, Half hour? Yeah, a little over 30 minutes. Wow, okay. So until next time, this is Matt at Texas Toast reminding you that if you're so smart, build it yourself. That's what I do. Thanks for watching, y'all. Okay, guys, if you're still with me on the live thing, um, we're done with the we're done with the, the edited portion. Um, if you guys have any questions for me about this, let's go ahead and 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 do them now. How about I'll spin all of this? Okay, Chris real is gonna quick. spin it around. And then we can do questions and answers. I wonder why this wheel thing. I don't think I don't know that you chased that one. It, it was working earlier. Today. Was it? Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Thanks for. Here we go. There was a burr or something in there. Oh, okay. All right. Hang on here. Let's okay, see. guys. So I'm gonna I'm actually gonna show you guys. This is like extra bonus content if you're so inclined for wheel adjust. So. I think I think one of the cool things about the um, about this this style rod is you can have you could you could basically do a Gibson style um, uh, spot faced headstock and have it look right and put this rod through and you only have to have a, a um, 
a channel that's three eighths deep, you can put one of these um, toothed things on here and kind of kind of bash it in place. And um, in fact, you could you could make this actually work exactly like a exactly like a Gibson, and and not everyone would know. I mean, I would know, but yeah. So you could essentially do something like that. The downside is, and Epiphones probably have this, you, you would be able to see this chunk here, whereas on the Gibson, where the nut is, there's a piece of maple. So you could probably make um, a little tiny piece of maple go there. But anyway, you could, you could get that and put it in place. And then, can they see, Chris, the, okay. Um, and then you can, you can just kind of tighten this. And then as you can see, guys, it's, going to do everything that a Gibson style rod will do. Now people will go, well, I like the tone of a, I want as much wood in the neck as I can get. These are the same people who don't like glue on stuff. Um, and so remember, you've got a channel here that's back loaded with a, with a buttload of glue. So it's really, I don't, I don't know. Uh, you could do, uh, you could use this, um, you could use this heel adjust, same kind of thing, you know, and use and go that way. Um, or you could put the wheel. Let's see if the wheel wants to play nice now. Come on, wheel. There you go. Now the wheel wants to play nice. So you could use this on a, on a Strat style and um, you can adjust the wheel and have it do exactly the same thing. So that's the cool part about having the, um, uh, the, the adjustment nut be removable and not be, you know, welded on. But I sure do like these rods that we're getting from, um, from Bitterroot. And you can get them from Amazon and stuff like that too. So are there any questions, Chris, that people have? Do you know? Um, there was somebody that uh, didn't like your... Uh no neck relief comments oh well tough shit i don't know what you want me to say i mean i it's okay for us to not like exactly the same thing i don't think that neck should have relief if you do that's fine we don't you know we don't have to agree on everything i think people uh don't understand how little relief when they talk about the amount of relief that a neck should or shouldn't have mm -hmm. it's very very little and most necks, you know, if you can see it, it's way too much. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, I mean, set your guitar up any way you want. It's yeah. not going to, I'm not going to be bummed out if you have a guitar set up differently than I would have mine set up. Have you ever had issues with the wheel breaking? This wheel? Uh, yes. Uh, no, but I'm sure it can. I have not, I've not really done very many of those guitars. Um, you can imagine, though, that if you're, imagine if you're, you have to kind of suspend this belief that this is a Gibson style thing. You could, you could basically put this on, you know, your, your strap with a, with a one-way truss rod, or you could put it on your Les Paul, and... I mean, I don't know why you would do this. You wouldn't do this to a Les Paul. But if you had a, and just like in that video, um, all you do is you screw this off and screw this wheel on. And it's, it's because I'm not doing it on a, on a heel of a, of a strap. But it's the same, same kind of thing. Imagine if this were the heel of your strap, you can, you know, just kind of, Put it on there, and it's it, the the truss rod has to be in an arch. And in order for me to show you guys what this truss rod looked like, I couldn't do it in an arch. Um, but yeah, that's the the neck material, neck construction is going to um, have a lot to do with um, the uh, whether or not this this style truss rod is a good is a good fit for your guitar. Um, so Fender and Gibson generally have, you know, uh, the USA stuff has, has really decent lumber. Um, so yeah.
Okay. What else? Uh, I lost the heel adjustment nut when I was scalloping my neck. Is it a standard size? Yep. Or is it specific for each truss rod? No, it's 1032 thread, and you can go to Stumac and buy these, or you can go to Warmoth and buy these, or they may have a short one too, or you can get this this wheel thing that I'm trying to get up. It's, you could probably go to the hardware store and buy a 1032 nut and make it work. So yeah, you could you could replace this with this, with this, with this, and they're all 1032 thread. Um, so let me show you what I mean. I just gotta get, so this is a piece of uh, 330 seconds round stock with 1032 threads. You can see the acorn nut screws on this fender nut. I said this fender nut screws on. <laughs> no, it's not going to do it. There it goes. The fender nut screws on. Um, this warm off extended heel thing screws right on. And let's see if the wheel wants to play nice. This guy will also screw right on. And people are like, that's the totally different size. It's not. Okay. It's, they will, they will interchange. Okay. Good. Uh, do bare tone necks need a longer truss rod? Yeah. Yeah. So this is a base truss rod. This is for a 34 inch scale base. And this is our truss rod for, uh, yep, for a 24 and three quarter inch scale neck. So you can see. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that you don't have to have this length for 24 inch scale necks. We could get away with a lot shorter of a, of a rod. But what I do want you guys to dig is the idea that you're really only gonna start to see movement on your neck right in the center. So if your, if your strings, if this, if this hump right here is not exactly where you need it to be, um, then you need a different truss rod. But I realized by the time you make the neck, that's a bummer to go, oh, my truss rod's the wrong size. But um, yeah, generally on a guitar, it won't be that big of a deal. But. Um, Chinese use 1032? No. Probably, Probably not. not. Uh, Give it a try, though. They might be. I'm, I'm not sure. I, I would be surprised if, if, you're, if you had a Chinese neck that it had a 1032 thread truss rod. But it might be. Are the Bitterroot rods uh, imported or made in the U.S.? They're imported. They're imported. Bought a rod a while back. It's got right and left threads, upper bar, lower rod, welded. Which is it? Which is it? Yeah. So it's got, um, so it, it's basically, it's basically this, this rod here, probably. It's been welded. It's got an upper rod and a lower rod. And the, the so this is upper rod, lower rod, weld. And it's got the loop here. It's got to have a loop. It's got to have something for the, uh, for the adjustment nut to, to impart, uh, force onto to arc the rod. So you probably have a dual acting two-way rod. Okay. Dual, dual action two-way rod. And that is it, it acts on this face and it acts on this face. And as you tighten it, it goes one way. And as you loosen it, it goes the other way. So if you imagine, let's put this rod into here. So as I tighten the rod, it moves this way. And as I loosen the rod, it moves this way. What allows it to do that? What do you mean? What allows it to move that way? Because the, the, because the nut is, is attached to the, the nut is the acting, the, the adjustment nut is welded to the 3 16 round stock. Right. But when you screw it in, it pushes... 
it, it pulls the threads and mm -hmm. bends it that way. Mm -hmm. When it goes the other direction, the there's a cat there's an end cap yep. on the yep. the sleeve that stops it from just unwinding. Yeah, then stops itself. it from unwinding. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So yeah, you probably have this rod. Is what I'm guessing, and it could be covered in blue plastic or red plastic or or Scotch tape. It will all work the same. Okay, here's a good question. Any reason you would avoid having a removable truss rod? No. My neck design drops a hot rod style rod down the heel once the neck is finished. You can take it out if you remove the neck. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. Cool. There this, you go. This Moserite style truss rod, which is the same as a Rickenbacker style truss rod, is like I said, it's designed to be. It's it's dual acting in that you can pull the rod and flip it upside down and put it back in. This is this rod is designed to be pulled out of the neck yeah. and put back in. Uh-huh. Um, how would you what's the best way to put a a, a truss rod slot in a neck if you don't have a beloved pin router? Oh, um a tip table router would be good. Um, I used to do I used to use the table router for all truss rod slots including the curved uh, arched slots that you would need to use for a, um, a Gibson style. Um, and we actually did it on its side and there was a, like a big ninja star that, that cut out and it was really, really spooky. And there was a guide bearing that, that rode on an arched slot and yeah. Ninja star, that's a thing. Anything else? Or we, can we start drinking? Um, yeah, I think I think that's it. Okay, thanks for watching, you guys. I don't know how well the um, uh, the half live, half uh, edited video is gonna go, but um, we'll see. We're gonna try it. But thanks for watching, and um, uh, 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 I'm gonna get this guy set back up again. Man, that thing's on there okay so thanks for watching you guys we'll see you next time um uh, remember tomorrow night we have our question and answer for uh guitar building and repair i'm looking forward to that so we'll see you then and if you have any extra questions uh we can answer those tomorrow night yeah yeah perfect there you go thanks guys thanks y'all